Na. I wanted to say a few words about Brachyplatystoma veilanti. It doesn't have a well-known common name except veilanti catfish. It's got a few um, vernacular names, Lulao or whatever else in, uh, in, in South America where it occurs. But anyhow, this uh, specimen we've had uh, since 2017 came to us through, we bought it from uh, Wesley Wong of Rare Fish, Los Angeles, California. This is a wild caught fish from Suriname. And it came to us at about, uh, I want to say, 10 inches or so, maybe a foot, it was already sizable, so we've had it five years plus, it was probably at least a year old, if not more, so we'll call it a six year old fish, currently it's about two and a half feet, tip to tip, it's from the same genus of Brachyplatystoma, where Tigrinus catfish or Tig is from, Jurians or Jur, Piraiba, Dorado, 747 catfish. They're all from the same genus of Brachyplatystoma. And in the wild, they're claimed to, to grow to four, five feet, even bigger. And they're also one of the major fish for, for local fishermen, commercial fisher, fishermen. Catch a lot of them and sell them for food. It's done very well, it grew up in 240 gallon tank, stood, it, stood its ground very, very, very much and uh, usually was not exhibiting any symptoms of it being attacked by the tank mates, even though it, it lived with many other fish, including some uh, tigs and Jurians and the 747 the Brachyplatystoma platinemum flat whiskers but uh, when, when it got transferred into this 4500 gallon tanks tank about four years ago I'd say we had a lot of problem here with aggressive tank mates and it fought a lot with other tank mates and that ruined its beautiful dorsal fin of which only remnants now remain never grew back after many occurrences of damage it never grew back to where it I mean it's nice tall beautiful dorsal fin as uh, on other Brachyplatystoma. I think if I caught it and uh, cut it just right, 
it might grow back but I don't want to torture the fish just trying to make it happen or to make it look better again I think it's a male because it uh, I don't think it grew much in the last three years maybe an inch or two in the last three years maybe three an inch a year it's it's pretty much fish is slowing down and it's not gonna grow pretty soon anymore at all if you don't count like an, an inch in two three years as a growth so I think it's a male based on the size I was expecting bigger growth given that it's a five six foot fish in the wild it came to us with that little peculiar protrusion on the upper uh, jaw right on the snout I didn't know what to make of it Wes was kind enough to offer to replace it but I said whatever I'll, we'll keep it it's okay it's a very um, avid feeder It's quite active at feeding times, you can tell it from its complexion. It's pretty uh, solid, pretty uh, <laughs> round, I would even say. It always grabs its, its fill for sure, every feeding. I haven't noticed it bother anybody in the current uh, tank, with the current tank, tank mates. As you can see, it swims freely with the Piraiba, both of them. Neither one is bothering each other, not that I noticed anyway. But still, once in a while, it, it bears some, some evidence of mild abrasion from uh, bites, bites from other catfish. I don't know if it's Piraiba or the... Uh, there aren't many biting catfish in here left except Piraiba the uh, sail fin marbled catfish Laearius mar uh, pictus and the marbled catfish Laearius marmoratus there is of course also the channel catfish in the back but that's those are the only few that could give the Valanti some grief and bite and bite it every now and then again nothing nothing uh, significant I don't know how well you can see it but even even right now you can see some remnants of uh, scrapes that have a shape of a mouth or, or a jaw of another catfish it still happens but all, all in all it's I would say its existence is very peace, pretty peaceful in this tank. It's got beautiful extensions on both lobes of the caudal fin, or of the tail, in other words. And they're long, and as you can see, this is the only fish in this genus that, that has these extensions in our possession. Tigs should have it, Piraiba should have it, Dorado should have them, but they don't because they get beaten off by the tank mates. Apparently Vailanti is assertive enough to ward off the attempts by the tank mates to bite off its uh, nice extensions. If the dorsal was intact, it would also have a beautiful extension on it. A long filament that's like a foot or foot and a half long or, or more or longer. So that's pretty remarkable and in a tank with such diverse and uh, semi-aggressive tank mates that it still has these extensions and pretty much always had them.
here it is showing it for you so pretty easy non-demanding fish to keep nothing really flashy half and half dusk dark top gray-white bottom some iridescence in the fins and in the skin as usual but beyond that it's not a flashy fish and it's it's an acquired taste I guess again this is one one and only we ever had so I cannot generalize or offer even anything more than what we know based on this one specimen If I kept, uh, if we kept the brighter lights longer, it would probably have better colors, but that would go for any fish. And if it was in the sunlight, that would probably be even better. But it is what it is, for now. They're not kept, I mean they're kept quite rarely. You barely ever see them in the hobby. Again, because I guess they're not flashy, not nothing like durians or tigrinus or even piraiba or dorado. They all look better or grow bigger, such as piraiba. So they're subdued, humble fish in that regard. Right? We call it affectionately valik. Valenti, we shorten it for Valik. <laughs>